Have you ever been sitting in a math class solving 20 to 30 similar problems? Your hand is aching, same calculation you're doing. You're going, I understood it. Why are you making, it do it, do, making me do it again and again? What's the point of me doing this? What's the point of learning this? Have you had that question? Um, I've, I've been sitting in an SST class and I felt like uh, they're making me remember some date of some king born some 700 years ago. And I'm like, why should I care about when he was born? What's the point? Why should I care? And sometimes they give me a fact like, you know, uh, wheat grows in this state. And I'm like, so what? You know, like, have you ever had this where you find yourself asking questions about the big picture of what you're really learning? And why that's important is once you have the big picture, right, you understand what questions is this subject even trying to answer. And then you can understand all of the smaller details. So what I'm going to do here is actually answer this question for computer science or coding. Because if you don't do that, no, you'll feel like, oh, I'm solving some programming puzzle. Good, I got the answer. So what? Mm, okay, I'm learning syntax and all, I'm doing coding, but what's the point of all of this, right? Why should I care? And uh, let's first answer that. And uh, I want you to ask, keep asking that question every single class you go to, okay? Every single time you're learning coding, I want you to keep asking, hey, why am I learning this? Good learners always ask that question. Hey, what's the point? Why am I learning this? How do I know I've learned it? Okay, uh, why does this matter? Why is this important? Why, is why are they teaching me this in comparison to many other things? So keep asking these questions as you go after class after class as you learn with us. Because one thing you may not know right now is that you've started taking your first step in changing the way you learn any subject forever. You won't know exactly how that is, but you will see that as you start learning. So let's come to the question. What's the point? What question is this field called computer science or coding really trying to answer? But to answer that, you have to go into who humans are. Why? Uh, it'll be, you'll see why. Um, let's imagine aliens came down, okay? And, they told, and they're asking, hey, uh, humans, you look like you're ruling the world. Like, how? Like, why? And uh, one of the ways to answer that is that, it, what is a one-line summary of humans? And my answer would be humans are tool builders. Humans are tool builders. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's imagine you're a giraffe and there is, a, there is an apple that's high up. I don't know if giraffes eat apples, but it's high up there and you want to reach it. You can't reach it right now. You wait for thousands of years of evolution to slowly like, you know, make your neck longer and then reach it. But humans, we don't do that. We just build a ladder. And then we teach other young humans, called kids typically, to build their own ladders. And very soon, within one generation, not thousands of generations, everybody is using ladders and plucking an apple. So humans are tool builders. Now I'm repeating this again and again because all of the field of computer science is basically thinking, what tool can we build for giving thinking jobs to machines. What tools can we build to actually make machines think? Because for a very long time, we figured out machines to make us make, um, not make, to do physical jobs for us. Hey, uh, very hard to lift, build a bulldozer, you know, it'll lift it. Uh, even right from a very small thing, right? Like very difficult to lift a bucket or put a pulley and you can lift it. Those are machines that do physical jobs for us. But then very recently, we invented a computer which does thinking jobs for us. And it's a big deal because the moment you know this, you can, you'll have questions now. Because I know you're curious. You'll begin to ask questions like, wait, if computers can think for us, how much, what all of our thinking jobs can we give to it? Can I only give like simple things like, hey, remember these five things and do it? Or can I give more? Wait, if they can think, then the next question that comes to my mind is, can they speak? Then can I communicate with them in a way that, you know, will be easy for me to make them do the thinking job, right? Great, okay, if they can think and speak, then, can they learn on their own? What if I don't tell them what to do? I say, you yourself figure it out. Can they do that? And uh, you might be hearing these words called machine learning, etc., which is a machine learning, right? Maybe it's possible. Can a machine learn on its own? Then comes uh, an even more interesting and deep question that you will ask, which is, if it can think, if it can speak, communicate with us, if it can learn on its own, can I teach it to feel and have emotions? Can a computer feel? And that's a question you will be thinking about. And all these questions, no matter what topic you're doing, what little piece you're doing, you will be asking these bigger questions in your mind and find that you're getting deeper. Because if a computer can feel and have emotions, then is it a living thing? What makes us living? Are we human because we can think? Are we humans because we can feel? Now to explore these questions, and this is going to take you a lifetime, right? Like you can keep, uh, the first part of it you'll, is, is called like basic programming, then you do machine learning. There are things that you can keep climbing here and throughout asking these questions, which is basically the thinking jobs of our brain. How can we give a teacher to a machine? It's almost like giving birth to a new species. And, but to do all of that, 
you have to learn how to speak with a machine. In other words, you need to learn how to speak machine, which is also another word. In other words, be a coder or learn how to code. And that's what you're starting here. And now long ago, maybe you were in LKG or UKG. Uh, you may have been taught, uh, hey, you may remember this. I vaguely remember it. A, B, C, D, E, F. And then you hear the song, A, B, C, D. And when you were learning the A, B, Cs, you would have never predicted that one day you will be listening to someone talk complex words and sentences and your brain will, without you having to think about it, exactly understand what I'm saying. And you will be able to make your own sentences, your own poems, your own stories using the building blocks that you built. So what we're going, doing, what we're doing now really is teaching you those building blocks, starting there and slowly building up to the point where you can answer these questions on your own, the thinking jobs question, and teach computers how to think. And a nice advantage to that is as you teach them how to think, it will force you to learn how to think on your own because you'll be learning what's called computational thinking. So what I want you to think about when you think about these classes and what you're doing here is you're not really learning just to code. You're learning how to think computationally. What does this mean? It sounds like a big word. You take a problem and then break it down into its pieces. How the art of breaking a problem down into its smaller pieces is what's called computational thinking. And that's something the computer will force you to do because it won't understand if you tell it in a vague way. Humans will, but a computer won't. So in your attempt to do that, you will learn how to think. Now that's not all. I know there's a bunch of things you're gonna be learning. Uh, I wonder how excited you are because the next thing you will learn, the real thing I wanna teach you through our journey is the art and science of learning anything. Because you may not realize it yet, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna find yourself feeling curious about all the subjects for no reason at all. And you're gonna find yourself believing and knowing that you can learn anything as long as you learn how to learn because we'll be teaching you that. And third and last, you'll be learning that learning can be enjoyed no matter what subject it is. And with those three packed, you'll be what's called, what I like to call a learning wizard. So what we're really building here is Hogwarts for the real life. I, if you're familiar with, Hog, with Harry Potter, you know what Hogwarts is, right? Imagine there was Hogwarts in the real life, in the real world. And then you get to go there and become a learning wizard who can cast spells on any subject that comes and learn it. Not immediately, you'll always put effort. You'll know what kind of effort to put, what kind of effort to not put, what kind of questions to ask to learn any field really, really well. So that much later you'll be like, any subject that's new, bring it on. I know exactly how to learn it. So with these in mind, I want you to pause right now and congratulate yourself for the effort and focus of listening to me. And as your brain was thinking about what this field is, let's begin with a curious question, which is, how do you begin to start speaking to a machine? In other words, how do you start coding?